Today, I totally forgot to film an intro, but here I'm making a mold for my MasterChef dish. So right now I'm just going down a 3D printed piece of plastic I made uh, with food grade adhesive. And here I'm wiping off the excess of the uh, food grade adhesive. I'm putting a little ring mold of clay around the actual ring. This is to actually pour the silicone later and it just helps uh, save the amount of silicone you need to use using clay. I'm wiping down the mold itself with a, a release agent so the silicone will actually come off very very loose once it cures. Here I'm just pushing in a more ring. I am totally overdoing this. Keep in mind I am doing this very very late at night so it's one of those things that I just wanted to get it done. I'll definitely make a video doing it the right way eventually uh, to show you how to really make a proper mold. Do not go off of this video to do that. I am weighing out the actual measurements, so it's a one-on-one -on -one ratio of the orange stuff to the white stuff. And when I mix that all together, that'll actually create the silicon. And the silicon itself, of course, will be uh, flexible and will make it easier to get things out of the mold later. And the easiest way I find to make sure it's a one-on-one -on -one ratio is you weigh out one and then you pour in the same amount of weight of the other. Here I'm just stirring it all together. I Personally, use an oversized container because it's a lot easier to kind of whoosh everything around and make sure it's all mixed. You then dab on some of that liquid uh, silicon just to make sure there's no air bubbles on the actual surface. Because if you get an air bubble on the surface, that is the worst thing that can happen because all this time you took to make the mold and then you have a giant air bubble in it. So I'm almost done here. I'm just pouring in the silicon itself uh, to actually make the mold. Of course, as you can see, I didn't take any effort to make a nice shape, but normally in most cases I'd make a nice square box looking shape. But uh, here you can see, you no longer see the actual 3D printed MasterChef logo anymore. So that's all nicely covered up. It hardened, it's all good to go. Now I just have to pull off the clay. So this is after about eight hours of letting this cure. Uh, the mold is all ready to go. Once you start getting the clay off, it's very, very easy, but at the very beginning, it's a little hard to get off. And it literally just comes off as easy as that, uh, just pulls right off. And I am done my mold. I am excited to see if it turned out. It's nice and hard, yep, yep. Just, get, just make sure it's uh, done, yep. Uh, and now you can see this is really cool. You can actually see the 3D printed plastic there stuck in the mold. I'm slowly working the actual piece of plastic out. Uh, try not to damage the mold at all. And there's the finished mold. Making some unhealthy fuel before diving into making Master Chef. Some nice breakfast. This is not all for me. <laughs> so it's pretty early in the morning. I'm getting all ready uh, to first clean up the kitchen and then uh, making everything I gotta get going to actually make my Master Chef dish. It's gonna be a dessert. It's gonna be delicious. I spent all last night deshelling pistachios for uh, uh, part of the recipe. I should have looked to see if you could get deshelled uh, pistachios. I don't know if you can, I'm assuming you can. But man, does it ever take a long time getting those nuts off the shelves. So here's a whole bunch of pistachios. Definitely won't need them all. I just went a little crazy on deshelling them. Turn out to get excited when it's almost exactly the perfect amount. Um, I needed about a cup of grounded pistachios. Um, pretty much dead on. So I just uh, took the grounded up pistachios and it's graham cracker is the other stuff in there. So it's a one to one ratio for right now. I'm going to taste it and make sure it tastes okay. But I'm pretty sure one to one ratio will probably be the perfect amount. So I got that all mixed together. It's okay if you see lumps. Uh, lumps is more than okay. Uh, you're going to eventually be putting butter in this. Uh, for my dish, so it'll make it clump up anyways, so don't worry too much. Uh, anytime you get clumps, it's just a sign you have a little tiny bit of moisture in there, but we're going to add the butter, so it's all great, and it'll, it'll work out pretty good, but this this already, just eating this powder, uh, tastes amazing. So right now, I'm actually doing one of the more important things, um, is if you don't do this step right, doesn't matter how great everything else turns out, you won't get everything out of the pan. So I'm using a spring form pan, the one thing a lot of people don't do 
is they don't take off the bottom uh, before they actually grease it. They just grease everything inside. It is always a smart idea to grease them separately and put them back together. The main reason for this is you have the little ridge on the inside. That's normally when I find if anywhere where a cake stuck so that I've made in the past, it always stuck, uh, gets stuck right in that ridge. So I'm literally just taking a knob of butter here um, and I am going to use this until there's nothing left. So it's always a good idea uh, to use more than less when it comes to greasing your pan. Uh, don't go too crazy, uh, but the last thing you want is any of this to stick. So you just go to town, uh, make sure everything is just glistening. If it's not glistening, it's not greased enough when it comes to this recipe because this is definitely going to need that layer. Uh, you can use parchment paper, but in this case, I don't want to because of the mixture on the bottom. It's going to actually be a problem for the parchment paper to almost get stuck in the base. So I'm purposely not using parchment paper. So as you can see already, zero calories in this dish. Uh, no, it's, it's definitely not a health conscious dish. That's for sure. It's just all about taste. And if you can see, like I literally ride the rim because the rim is always where you, you get your biggest issues with sticking. And you always have a seam on your pan. You always want to make sure you get nice and in that seam uh, with, with a springform pan just to make sure there is nothing left to get stuck on. So everything's all nice and greased, including the seams. Uh, so we're all good to go on that. So I've added a whole stick of butter. I'm just melting it. Uh, this is going to keep the graham cracker and pistachio mixture held together like glue. I might need to use even more butter than this, but I'm just melting this first to see how much it looks like. well here so that inside is where I'm actually going to pour the butter and this is going to be good and you're just going to fold in the butter to make this beautiful crust this is very similar for any type of cheesecake or any type of base you're trying to make in this case I'm going really crazy in terms of what this is going to turn into but you'll get to see it So as you can see, it's all the, <laughs> the shadow. Uh, as you can see, the um, crust is all there. It has a nice glisten to it. That's when you know you put enough butter in there. The butter, just a reminder, it's gonna act like glue. So we're gonna put this in the fridge, harden up, and then we're gonna work on a chocolate mousse that is gonna go on top of this. Right now, I am really happy how well that turned out. Hopefully the rest is just as simple. This dish is literally an idea from my head. First time ever making it, I thought, why not now's the time to try a new dish uh normally you go for something you've done a hundred times to actually present uh to the judges on master chef but i thought you know what let's try something different try something creative because if i do end up making it on the show that's exactly what you're going to do you're going to be making recipes that you might have never done before and just hope they work out this is exactly that so hopefully this turns out great uh i make base crust before so i'm not worried about that but it's the chocolate mousse and there's going to be a lemon curd on top that uh Though those are going to be challenging. So just doing one's hard enough, doing both in the same dish uh, without messing up one or the other, uh, that's going to be a nice challenge here. This part right now where I have to make the chocolate mousse, it's going to be very delicate and very precise in terms of time. So I probably won't film most of this, but uh, here it goes. Hopefully everything works out okay. So to make this chocolate mousse, it's actually very simple ingredients. I'm just using, believe it or not, a whole liter of whipping cream. Uh, going to use some milk chocolate. I personally find all dark chocolate might be too much and dark chocolate. So uh, we got those ingredients. Literally that is it beyond some gelatin, which makes all the magic happens. If you don't have the gelatin, you're not going to have a mousse. You're going to have a soup of chocolate, which is still going to be delicious. Got to melt down the chocolate in a double broiler. 
to get this all together, it's all very, very time sensitive. So I'll definitely leave it here and show you when the moose is done. I just had to stop for two seconds to show you how good that looks so far. So that went incredibly well. I just need to let it set. Uh, there is way too much extra chocolate mousse. Uh, so that's not a bad thing to have too much and not uh, enough. But yeah, that's going to be delicious to have for later. And then there's um, the nice layering there. So that's the chocolate mousse is in there. I cleaned around the edge that I'm going to have to re-grease after. But there's going to be the lemon curd on top there to finish it off. And the lemon curd is also going to have gelatin in it. So it'll set. And there's also gelatin in the chocolate mousse. So it'll set better. And when this is all done, you're going to have that layer of that pistachio graham cracker crust, chocolate mousse, and then a layer of lemon curd. Might sound a little different, but it's going to taste amazing all together. It's crazy to think I only have a few steps to go, then I have to pack and head to Toronto to actually serve this. So it's really neat to see it all come together. I'm glad so far there's no hiccups. Uh, hopefully on the last stage there's not a hiccup with the lemon curd, but if the lemon curd works out great, it'll all be awesome. So I'm done. I need to clean up, that's for sure. There's uh, enough things uh, of a mess I should have cleaned up as I go, but that's one thing I'll eventually learn how to do. So I'm done the lemon curd, uh, so that's all cooling. Getting that a little bit more closer to a uh, fridge temperature before applying that to the top. I'll be adding gelatin to the top, but the nice part is, is the, the mousse has set enough that I'll be able to put the lemon curd on top. I'm just going to add some gelatin to the lemon curd and when I do that the gelatin mixture there I uh, will harden it up and then it'll be a nice yellowish layer on top of the chocolate there. So all I have left to do is clean the kitchen. So I'm going to take a five minute break because I've I'm exhausted but uh, beyond that uh, things are going surprisingly well and I'm leaving to Toronto in about two hours so I really got to speed this up but uh, so far everything's going pretty good. Headed to Toronto, can't believe I already made my dish. This is a whirlwind. I'm going to get there around probably 11 o'clock at night, wake up pretty early at 4, get all ready and present my dish at 7. So it is crazy. Hopefully everything goes well. Even if it doesn't, this is a fun experience and I'm looking forward to it. So as luck would have it, uh, the microwave is just randomly beeping. It's not because you'd have the door open or anything. So I'm pretty sure this microwave might have seen better days. Um, just decides to beep on its own now. So I'm definitely going to try to unplug this.